Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Casting Angles with Mac Brown. How you doing, Mac? I'm doing great, Marvin. How are you doing? As always, just trying to stay out of trouble. Uh, I guess we were both on the road last weekend. How was Atlanta? Oh, the buzz in Atlanta was fantastic. There was a lot of people there, enthusiastic, and it was a, it was a really good crowd. Uh, well, good. Yeah, and Michigan was really great. It was, um, I mean, it was an absolute who's who of uh, streamer fishing uh, at Bobbin in the Hood put on by the guys at Schultz Outfitters. Yeah, that sounded fun. That, that sounded like a great event up there, too. And, um, yeah, I wish we could be like, beam me up, Scotty, and go to, go to a bunch of those at the same time, Marvin. Yeah, I was just happy because I was able to travel on Friday and not on Thursday. So I got an extra day at home, which is we were talking about as we start marching through show season. Um, that can kind of be a game changer. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 really glad that we have a have a week. A whole week rather than a day or two turnaround. Cause I I'm really I'm really tired. I mean it's I think I'm getting older. And that I used to do these when I was younger, and now it's like it definitely is harder on me. Like I'm more fatigued, not having as much rest. You know, I guess old age. Mm, that doesn't sound good, Mac Brown. But we were talking before we started recording, and we thought something interesting to talk about uh, uh, today would be kind of the the power of a constraint and learning to kind of be nimble and improvising. And I know that happened to you. Uh, you know, I guess the example that kind of brought it to mind for you is you had an opportunity to kind of fill in a tying uh, class down in Atlanta, but it's true for every aspect of your fishing and actually for your life too. Oh yeah. No, it was really fun. I was going down the tire road in Atlanta, which is over when you walk in all the way on the right. And uh, Ben came up and said, yeah, take, take these tying blocks on Friday, Saturday. And, uh, so I got there and I didn't have anything. I have my spider co knife, you know, that's all I had. So I don't, I don't need scissors. I got a knife. <laughs> so I went down to, I got a vice, got a hook, one piece of partridge. And I go up to the tying thing and think, what am I going to talk about? I've got some partridge tackle. And I thought, well, I'll sit and look at the table and see if anybody left me anything. So praise the land and he left a little piece of pine squirrel, really small little strip of pine squirrel. And somebody left a little olive olive piece of um, ostrich hurl. So then I got up there, I go, hmm, I got this and I got a piece of partridge. So that's what I did the whole demo for 45 minutes and talked them through it. And it was really, really great because, I mean, I like kind of working in chaos theory like that, going, hey, what are we going to make? We got a couple of materials and we got this. What are we going to do? So it worked out fine. And I talked to him first about Dave Whitlock, the aquatic food organism book that he did years ago. You know, just about the burrowers, the swimmers, the clingers. And and I said, hey, we got these three materials. What can we make? And everybody kind of looked around like, what's he going to make? What's he talking about? And before, you know, we talked about the burrowers, and that's what I ended up tying. And it was really, it was really fun. Like, I like getting up there and just kind of being surprised myself. Like, what do we have? So, kind of, kind of that way when we fish, Marvin, too. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's the whole kind of impetus. I mean, a simple example is the roll cast when you can't back cast, but there are going to be plenty of examples where, you know, you can't do things the way you want to either because you left some gear uh, in the car and yeah. you don't want to go back or you're in a casting situation where you can't cast the way you normally do. And, you know, if you just kind of embrace the constraint, it'll make you creative and you'll find a solution. And then you can kind of add that to your quiver of fly fishing skills. Oh, yeah, I'm excited to take, I still have the fly, it's in the little name badge that says, you know, Atlanta Fly Fishing Show, and I put it in there, you know, that's where I put people's business cards and anything important, so that little, that little wet fly is still sitting in there, and I'll tell you where I'm going to go use it, there's, there's a lot of lakes up here that are high up, and of course the lakes have a lot of sand deposits where the creeks flow in, and those exist, there's a lot of those burrowers that are on the lake that are great swimming mayflies. So I'm going to put it on the point fly, and I'm going up there before I head out to Pleasanton next week. I'm going up there for a couple of days, and I'm sure I'll throw that on the point just because here's a constraint fly. Let's go fish it because we know it's going to work because I've seen that in stomachs so many years up there that I'm sure it'll be good. But but thank you to, to the, whoever left the ostrich, Earl. I know Landon's the one that left the pine squirrel. Just a little tiny strip, 
that's all it took. And so basically we killed 45 minutes time, one fly and then telling stories about how to fish it and where to fish it. Yeah. And, then, and, uh, you know, Landon is the reason that pine squirrels are an endangered species now. Well, they kind of are. And, and if he's listening, you know, that is true. Like I've talked to several suppliers, um, the last couple of months, we go, I'd like to get some pine squirrel. Like, oh, it's endangered and I can't hardly get it. So it is a big shortage on it. So luckily I called Davey and Davey had plenty of it and Davey, Davey hooked me up with it, but most of the suppliers that don't even have it in stock. So it's kind of hard to, for all the tires out there that want to use. I, I had some, but it was too long. And I wanted some some shorter ones, you know, for like micro sizes. And um, so it looks like it's time to start going after some chipmunks around here. So that works pretty good. Too. Oh, well, there you go. And uh, I know, so you've got a week off. I'm done. I'm not traveling anymore for show season. So I'm excited just to basically try to do as little as possible Super Bowl weekend, but I know you mentioned that uh, you're going to be heading out to Pleasanton, but I also know you're doing some shows other than the fly fishing shows. Yeah, I'm just doing the other one that will be up in uh, Midwest Fly Fishing Expo. And I'm excited about that one with Alice and uh, Phil Rowley and and um, Michael Mari. And that'll be a good, good fun going up to, I guess, Detroit. And that'll be, I don't know the dates, to be honest. It's uh, sometime there early March, maybe the first week of March, I think. But um, that'll be fun. That'll close out the winter season of shows for me then till next year. So, yeah, it's been it's been a fun run. But I'll be honest, the, the last three weeks have been is tiring. I mean, doing Thursday through Sunday. And I think Atlanta on Friday and Saturday, I had less than five minutes turnaround the whole day. So even though you see all these people you want to go talk to and boost, there's just there's no time. And I, I think that that makes it... Um, tough to see people you don't get to see but once a year so then at the end of the day you can catch up with some of them if they're still in there but it's like it was busy it was a real busy like turnaround the whole time but it was great to see folks i was really glad in atlanta my buddy rick uh hartman flew up from from texas he redfish great great caster he's one of my heroes casting in the world you know and he came up we got to hang out the last two days and cast a bunch and talk about philosophy of casting and all these things that exist and he's one of the geniuses in the sport and so i was really tickled to spend time with him yeah and you know folks if you want more information on that midwest fly fishing expo if you go to the events link on the articulate fly website um you can get some details and it'll take you to the event and give you the dates and all that kind of good stuff and also too want to remind everybody that uh, mac and i are working together on a fundamentals of casting series and we've had to push it out um just because uh, show season has been uh, a little bit more taxing than either of us expected. I think, you know, one of the big reasons for it is there's been so many travel hassles this year. Um, so, you know, we're going to have a session uh, next month in March, another one in April, another one in May. And there's a link in the show notes to that. And uh, you should uh, check it out. They'll be live. But if you can't make it, we're going to record them so you'll be able to watch them at your leisure. Um, you know, Mac and I have been thinking about this uh, a lot about how to really – kind of boil things down and to give people kind of, you know, the best, briefest, most concise and powerful foundation to kind of work on their casting game. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm really excited about it, Marvin, as well, from, from the last few weeks, just realizing that there's so many sermons out there that I really do think that that hearing the right sermon makes all the difference. I mean, I could tell you a story of what happened in New Jersey. Young lady been working on this for a couple of years, and she's heard all these different sermons, and she was almost in tears saying that in Honduras, that Roca still wasn't there after working with all these instructors for two whole years. And I told her, I said, look, let's meet in the morning. I promise you in under three minutes, you're going to throw 60 feet. And I know that sounds like a big task to ask. And you know what? She threw 60 feet in under three minutes and had a big smile on her face. But I promise you, Everything in casting is about hearing the right sermon. There's a lot of garbage out there on YouTube, people that don't understand it, people that say put the thumb on top and all kinds of ridiculous things. And hopefully in Pleasanton, in Michigan, we're going to get, you know, plenty of folks there that want to tune in because I, I don't think they're going to hear this sermon that many places. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as it's getting warmer, Mac, I know that means that uh, you might have some schools coming up, right? Yeah, we got our first one coming up 
I think it's the day after I get back from Michigan show, and that's in March. And then they go March, April, May, June, then October, November. And um, we're waiting to see. I know March is March is about full right now. We're working on uh, May May schools, and um, that's all listed on the flyfishingguideschool.com website for the schools. And then there's casting schools as well on my website, macbrownflyfish.com. But I think we got a lot in Atlanta, to be honest. There was a lot of people that, that sent messages. I looked. I didn't respond to them today because I was still really tired from from the last four days. But, yeah, I think that that's going to be, be a lot of fun in the spring. Yeah. And, you know, it's a great time of year, folks. It's kind of odd, right? Because, you know, some of us, at least in the southeast, we're sort, I actually saw my first robin today, which I always make a mental note of that. Uh, so I'm hopeful that we're out of the deep freeze down here. But... You know, if there's a show near you, go to a show. If it's too cold to get out and fish, spend some time at the Vice, uh, watch a little, uh, some sports, maybe drink a little uh, brown liquor, tie a few flies. Um, or if you're lucky and it's warm, get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Matt. Tight lines, Barbara. <laughs>